Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to Building Blocks. I am your host, Fulgens. Anna Hill could not join us today, but she will be back Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Ecamm Network News. Let's see who's here today. Yes, Dan, so you do not win your cup of coffee because I am not wearing a fedora. I got my haircut yesterday. <laughs> so too bad, too bad. Miss Heal is here moderating on the side. Parker Jennings, hello. And Mr. Moderator, hello. Uh, today, we're going to be covering automated scenes and how you can use this to enhance your video production inside of Ecamm. It's a native built-in feature using this little icon right here that you find in your scenes panel. So we're gonna go into that and have a few examples for you uh, and some inspiration and some tips and tricks on how you can use the automated scenes folder. Use the automated scenes feature actually. And in Ecamm it's called automatic groups. So we're gonna get into that. All right. So the first, the first example I wanted to show you is what we actually use for the waiting screen just now. And if we go back to the waiting screen real quick, you're going to see some circles flying in. Right. So that is an example of something you can do using the automatic group feature. So if you go into live demo mode, and if you go into your scenes window here, right, and you have these here, you have duplicate current scene, you have new group, and then you have new automatic group. Right, so this is how you can create a folder. And within this folder, you're gonna create a series of scenes that you want to automate. And not only that, but you have more customization here in the folder itself, where you have advanced to next scene or random scene. So you can control that. I usually have it set to advanced to next scene and time interval if you want it to be a fixed interval. So for example, we have it set to every one second, or if you say Ecamm, do your thing, I'll let you decide, right? But we have on fixed interval and transition also. Transition is very helpful in regards to what you want to create and how you want it to transition on the screen. And we're gonna get into that as well because for the circles, let's go into some circles here, right? Uh, I'm probably gonna be off screen because this is going to be a solid um, background, right? So for this here, so these are the series of scenes that we have for the circles countdown, right? And we have it set to one second and slow cross dissolve. So if we put it all together, boom, 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 right? So that's how we were able to create the countdown and could probably show you how uh, you can do something like that. So it's a little hack that we have in Ecamm where you can create a series of scenes and then you record the scenes and you bring it back into Ecamm as a video, right? And that's what we did here. So if we go to, I have a, I have a scene called Other Ecamm. <laughs> this is the Other Ecamm scene. So I can get out a light demo for this one, right? Uh, so this is the original, um, this is the original countdown that we had, right? It was called the, what we call the basket weave, right? So it's a series of transitions in here, right? So we have four scenes in here. And if we automate it, and we have it set to next scene, fixed interval, one seconds, and slow cross dissolve. So if we click play here, let us it do its thing. And while it's doing its thing, you can just hit the record button, right? And you can actually record that inside of Ecamm. Let it rotate a few times. And finish and end the recording. So now when you're done with that, you pull the file. And this 
you bring that back into Ecamm as an animated overlay and you could set it to loop, right? So if we come back here to the countdown scene, I'm going to unmute for a second. Let's turn that off and let's go back into live demo mode and to show you, right? So this scene here is set to loop. And what we did was we lowered the opacity on this thing, right? So if we kick the opacity back up, right? So this was the original video. This is the original video. So we recorded this in Ecamm and brought it back. And, and the beauty of the automated scene is that you don't have to press anything, right? You just let it do its thing and you record it and you bring it back, right? So what we did was we brought it back into Ecamm and we set it to loop and then we lowered the opacity. So I'm holding down the shift key and I'm using the trackpad. So it's to two finger scroll. So it's finger scroll up, add a countdown. And there you have it. You have a custom countdown um, intro waiting screen for, for your show, right? Just as that, simple as that, right? So that is one of the examples of how you can use the automated scenes feature in Ecamm. P says, geez, this is like some, some witchcraft. <laughs> uh, hello, David Hunt. Good to see you here. Hashtag bring Anna back. Yeah, yeah. Listen, hashtag away. This is like watching Simon and Garfunkel, except only Garfunkel showed up. <laughs> Maggie is down with brutal COVID right now. Day five. This is an appreciated diversion. Thank you, Maggie. And hope you feel well and you get nice, some nice rest. All right. We have another example for you here. So that's something that you can do is to customize your, uh, create some animated graphics, bring them back into Ecamm and you could use them for custom countdown scenes. Right? So that's one example. The other example is something like this. The karaoke feature that you can do, right? So it's a karaoke type of design where we have a sentence here. And so, the, for example, this is the full sentence here. And if you can see here, automate is one color. Then you go to the next scene, your. Then show with Ecamm Live, right? And let's play and have it all come together like so. And remember that we were mentioning that the type of transition that you have in here plays a role because look how it's look how uh the scenes are jumping to, to the next right it flows well because in here we have the transition set to swipe so if we change this transition for example to let's say cross dissolve might not look as cool right that's not too bad but if you did slow crosses all, for example, right? That's a little slow. Uh, we have this set to swipe. I think swipe looks pretty cool with that, right? So that's another hack that you can do. And again, this is set to a fixed interval one second, because now if we were to do a uh, random time change and advance random scene of course it would not make sense here right and if you notice here too time interval random change random time change between you get to choose the intervals right so we don't want any of that we'll keep it on fixed interval but let's just say let's just say we were to say advance to random scene let's see what will happen here show <laughs> It's like, I don't know, it's broken. It's broken right now. So we'll just keep it on random. No, we'll keep it on fixed interval, advance to next scene, and leave it on one second. Boom. Yes, all that is missing is the bouncing ball, right? So that is pretty cool. Uh, another example that we have here is lower thirds, right? If you have lower thirds and you want to automate them, for example, these, this is some graphics that we're creating for live shopping here. And it's a series of three different scenes that you're going to see here, right? 
with three different designs for the lower third. So each scene will have a different series of text displayed on here, right? So for group A, so again, this is for our live shopping. I think this QR code, is, it's going to um, the Anand Fulgen's Amazon shop or whatever. But this was totally bitten from uh, <laughs> some morning show, <laughs> some local morning show. I just bit it and I was like, you know, that's a good idea to create this using automated scenes. And that's exactly what we did. And um, so, for example, this scene here will have a product displayed. Um, on the far left, you have the logo. You can have a logo here and you have a name of the product or description of the product. And then you come to group B, for example, here. So group B can have um, the price listed and some maybe a, a fact about the product. And then you go to group C and group C will have some more stuff, including probably like a discounted price, um, buy it now. So different, you have different areas for different text and then have it all come together. Of course, when you're doing something like this, you probably don't want it to set it to one second, but for the case of this demo, we have it set to one second, right? Or actually this is set to every five seconds. Um, and this might be a little too fast for when you're doing a show, right? You might want to set it to one minute or more. And again, transition swipe works really well with this type of thing when you have a series of <laughs> overlays or series of lower thirds, swipe works well. If you switch this to, let's say if we do do cross dissolve, Let's see what cross dissolve does, right? It's not as fluid. It's not as fluid as the swipe feature. If we were to do no transition, no transition is just, you know, neutral. No transition works, right? However, swipe for this use case is pretty fluid. Right, so swipe works pretty good with this one. And there are other transitions that are in Ecamm that people either don't know about or don't really use. <laughs> uh, like uh, Ken and Glenn's, or Ken's favorite feature. I think it's a uh, photocopy. This might be a little too distracting, but you can do stuff like that, right? So it's just creating like a photocopy transition in between. Uh, and one I, I really like using is the cross zoom. But for this use case, it's not going to be, it doesn't make sense to use something like that, right? So we'll go back to swipe, okay? So we'll leave that alone. And another example that we have here, uh, last, I believe last week we used this, where again, it's, it's a similar feature to, it's a similar concept to the circles. However, um, Yeah, I am muted in all these scenes, but it's a series of emojis and everything stays the same except for the color of the background. It alternates between red and gold and the emoji will change in each scene, right? So each of these scenes has a series of emojis and it's going to rotate. Right, so let's play. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be muted from these things, so I'll just stay quiet. I'm just going to hit play and let it do its thing. Right, and that is set to. That is set to next scene, time interval, fixed interval, every two seconds. And we set it to a slow cross dissolve, a slow cross dissolve, right? And again, just to test it out, let's see, it would not hurt if we try to do a swipe or something like that and see what it does, right? So again, I'm gonna just stay muted for a little bit and we're gonna play and see how swipe works. Right, swipe is not as as fluid as the slow cross dissolve for this particular graphic. Let's see if we were to do cross zoom. Cross zoom might work.
And once again, let's go back to slow cross dissolve. Right, so slow cross dissolve, it creates like a nice fade effect. So I think that's that's the best for this one, right? And then, you know, you can do things like that. And uh, this was created by Anna. Anna created a waiting screen a while back. And you create, you throw a mixture of things in there and make it as fun and creative as, as, as you possibly can. And then you automate all of that. So I believe I'm also muted in these scenes, but you, I'm just going to run through them so you can see what, uh, how they automate. And we have this set to next scene, fixed interval every five seconds and also on cross dissolve, right? So let's try this. Right. So that is a series of just random, random graphics, animations where you can actually stay in, um, you know, create some, bring some camera overlays in there, um, have some transparent PNGs pop up and all that good stuff. And you can make it as fun as you want. Right. So, uh, you know, and also use that as a as a waiting screen or a countdown screen, if you will. And anything that you want to stay on screen constantly at all times you make sure that they're in the show in all scenes the show in all scenes overlay panel and not in show and current scene right so anything that you want automated and rotating keep it in show and current scenes for example if i wanted to use this uh you know the waiting screen that we just played right and i want to have a countdown timer staying constantly throughout all the scenes Let's pick one here. So let's just say three minutes, right? So this, this, this countdown timer that you see here, I make sure that it's showing in all scenes. So no matter what scene, I right? It's going to stay there. It's going to stay up front. Uh, so that is very important when you're doing something like this, right? When you're using these type of waiting screens, uh, if you're using an automated, feature as a waiting screen and you have a countdown timer or you have a camera or something like that make sure that's showing in all scenes or else it's going to get lost in a shuffle same thing with comments right so if uh anita hello if anita is coming in and we have let's say let's go back to karaoke right if we're here and we say that's so cute that's okay. You see what just happened there? So it got lost in one of those scenes there, right? So if you want to bring, a, bring in a comment, you may have to actually stop in one of these scenes. And then you can interact with your comments again, right? Or it's going to get lost in there. So I think that went into automate your show. It's right here, right? So it, it, it got caught up in there. But if you notice how we're automating this and the timer stays prominently displayed up here because it's currently in showing all scenes. So that's very important to know. And something else uh, you should know is that when you're using automated scenes, you cannot use preview mode. So if we were to hit preview mode, you're going to get this notification saying that Automatic scene group is running. Preview mode cannot be used while an automatic scene group is running. Stop the automatic scene group now. I'm not going to do that. I'll hit cancel uh, because preview mode needs to be set to one scene uh, before you can interact with that. Right. So that's also important to know. Let's see what we have going on here in the comments. Eric Mockler, hello, good to see you here. Kimberly, good to see you. 
Wayne Roberts, hello, good to see you here. Dan, no hard feelings. <laughs> we love you too. We'll just don't feel bad. Um, Environmental Coffee House has a cute colon here. Uh, maybe unrelated, but I had a Zoom call yesterday and I could not get my camera to work. Even though I thought I had the right settings in Ecamm with virtual camera, it worked with a Google meeting. Huh. I'm not too sure. Because you said it was virtual camera is on, it worked with Google meeting, and you couldn't work it with a Zoom call. Uh, I know for, for me, I don't know if this is the same issue with you, uh, but... Sometimes when I have multiple cam, cam links being connected and whatnot, uh, then I'll have like cam link 4K, cam link 4K2, uh, you know, just make sure that you select the right cam link, right? Because I think I'm on cam link 4K and then, nope, not here, in here. I'm on cam link 4K number two, right? So I don't know, hopefully that helps. I usually have that issue too, and I'm wondering what's going on, but then I'm like, oops, I'm in a, it, it, I create a different cam link profile and whatnot. Sorry to hear that though. Dr. Elo, hello. Oh, we have both doctors in the house. Dr. Elo is here and Dr. Omar. Happy Friday to both of you. All right. So, so we went over a few different use cases for using the waiting screens. Once again, I like this version. I like the, I like the karaoke feature. All it's missing is the ball, but we could actually bring that in. It's just not going to bounce. It's just going to be, uh, you know, you have like a, a, a PNG or a widget or not a widget, a PNG or a emoji of a ball or something like that. And you, you just add that in each scene. But it's not going to bounce or anything like that. Maybe you can have it fly in, but I think that's really cool, right? So we have that. And we have the circles, right? We we put this together and we actually recorded it in Ecamm. And then we brought it back in as an animated overlay to create this. Right? In addition to that you can actually automate lower thirds, such as this one, and create different designs with the same color pattern. And you could automate those throughout your run of show. Uh, like so, right? And it doesn't have to be actually a lower third. It can be graphics throughout the screen, right? But you can automate them. In addition to that, you can actually... Um, set the interval later, right? So this is for display purposes, because if I was to use this, if I was to actually be using this, it wouldn't be going at five seconds per interval, probably 30 seconds or a minute would make more sense, right? Because you need the person to take the time to read to see what's going on. There's another awesome uh, use case for this. Last week, we showed you um, something inspired by ESPN, Pardon the interruption, right? Which was this here. These things, right? These graphics here, right? And there's a series of them to go through like an entire random show. And as you can see up here, there's a three minute countdown in each of these scenes. So what we're gonna do, we're going to take these scenes and automate them and see how, how this will work. Don't worry about what's going on down here um, underneath, right? Because we're going to add the lower third here because with this particular design, with this particular design, there is this lower third here. And again, I was mentioning before, for example, if you want a timer, let me bring my camera back up. Wrong camera. If you want... Anything you want to show in all scenes, make sure that it's showing in all scenes, right? So this lower third, for example, I would move this entire lower third to the show in all scenes folder. So if you look in the overlays panel here, 
I'm moving this to show in all scenes, right? So now, regardless of what scene the automated group goes to, that lower third is going to stay displayed in every scene. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these scenes here. I believe I have, hold on a second here. We have this one. This is the main. So we have a few of them here. So we're going to take this one up to the last one here, and we're going to bring them to an automatic group, right? So we're going to add automatic group, new automatic group. Let's bring this all the way to the top here. And we'll just label this PTI, PTI inspiration. PTI inspiration. So we're gonna take all of these here. We're gonna go one all the way down to this one here. And command C. I don't wanna have, I don't have to like move them. We're just gonna copy and paste them into the automatic group. Command V. Getting a little beach ball here, but no worries. It should copy and paste, no problem. All right, so everything is in here. Everything is in here. Uh, let's make sure that the timer, the timer that's, that you see up here uh, underneath the, the PNG image, that timer is showing in each scene. It's its own timer. It's not showing in all scenes, right? The only thing showing in all scenes is the lower third. So we're going to take this entire thing now. We don't have to worry about using a stream deck. We don't have to worry about, um, as you can see, like I'm doing it manually right here with, uh, with my mouse. We're going to go into the gear icon right now. And for this case, right, if it was actually um, where we're going by the countdown, right? So that's, it's a three minute countdown. So what's that? Um, what's that? Six, 90, whatever whatever that is, right? But for for the case of this demo, we're not gonna go that high. We're going to just make sure it just goes to maybe every five seconds, right? Just so you can see. But um, you can actually, you know, set it to the actual time, whatever. And then for this, uh, maybe we don't need a transition. We'll probably keep it under no transition just for the case of this demo. Uh, transition might, might not work for this one. So let's see how that works, right? No transition every five seconds. So you can actually just worry about your content and not having to worry about triggering the scenes, because especially if you have a lot of scenes to go through in three minute intervals, look at that. Basically Ecamm is, is running the show for you. It's being your, your, your automated producer, if you will. The only thing with this one, right? This this is not meant to rotate because once it gets down to H, it's you should stop it, right? Because it's it's going to continue looping until you stop it, right? But in 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 you know if you were actually to do this in real life, you're not going to use five second intervals, right? You're going to use three minute intervals. And you'll have plenty of time to stop that final scene. But it's just doing its thing, right? Again, if you want it, and again, so this is a series of scenes. All, let me stop it right at the main one here, right? This is a series of different scenes. And all of this that you see here, these are all text overlays inside the Ecamm. The only thing that was imported here. Uh, were the images that you see in the upper right corner. Uh, those were imported images as placeholders. You can put whatever you want there. And those are, and they each have a scene allocated to them, right? The only thing that is showing in all scenes is this lower third here, right? So this lower third is a group of text overlays, as you can see in the lower left corner. Right, this is all text that you see here to create this lower third design. And since I want this to stay static, so the scrolling ticker, because you know, if you were to automate this and the scrolling ticker is gonna start every time, the timer is gonna restart, a clock or whatever. So you want that to just stay constant throughout 
make sure it shows in all scenes. Anything you want to see constant throughout, show in all scenes. If I wanted to, I didn't need to have my camera showing in all scenes, right? But I actually, but for this particular design, I want it. But if I wanted to, I can have a camera, this camera showing in all scenes. So I don't have to worry about pasting in every scene, right? And it will stay there. And each scene, as the scenes rotate, I'm going to have my lower third staying in place. My scrolling ticker will stay in place and my camera will stay in place. All right, let's see how you guys are doing over here. Let's go back to and perfect example. I'm going to go back to my scene where I, we, we read comments. And as you notice, the lower third is still there, right? Because now I have to hide it because it's showing in all scenes. So I'm going to hide that and put it back into its folder <laughs> for safe keepings. Rukia Robinson, good morning. Good to see you here. This is great. Glad you find it helpful. Michelle, Michelle, good to see you. Long time. Virtual Kings, Martin McKenna, Command C, Command V is my life. Yes. <laughs> so as you just saw, right, that was a, a, a series of scenes that we able to just select everything at the same time. Command C, copy, Command V, paste. Diego is asking, where did you get the ticker animation and time? The ticker animation and time. Yeah, again, this is all inside of Ecamm. So let's go back to here. Let's bring the lower third back on here. So if you are not familiar, with it. Let's go back into demo mode. Ecamm has built-in timer. So if we click on this here and double click that, this is a timer overlay that's in Ecamm. So that's the clock there, right? So if you, if you select a timer, you see the three, two, one right here, down here, new countdown overlay. So when you open that up, you go to type, you have countdown for amount of time, countdown to a time every day, daytime, clock, stopwatch. So in this case, we're using the clock feature, right? And the scrolling ticker is also text. So if we select this now, right? So this is text and under style, you select scrolling ticker right? And then you save. So now your text will be scrolling, right? So we're going to wait for that to come through because actually we have some overlays here that are hiding. It's kind of masking the scrolling ticker and the scrolling ticker comes out. And you could also change the speed of the scrolling ticker as well. So right now we have it closer to the tortoise so it can move a little slower versus the hair, of course, is going to move at lightning speed. So we don't want it moving too fast. So we moved it a little bit towards the, the tortoise. And that's how we have it. This is all native inside of Ecamm. This entire, this entire design, ex with the exception of, with the exception of, let's see if we can hide them. Where are you guys? The images, right? So if I hide the image, this entire thing was was uh, built inside Ecamm using Ecamm Live text overlays. Right, so all text overlays, this is the camera overlay, and within the camera overlay also, this is text overlay as well, right above. And we have uh, this is to two up camera. Just if we have a guest and a, a host and a guest, you have two cameras side by side. It's a little crooked right now. So we'll just turn that off. <laughs> right. So with the camera overlay there. And again, if uh, we didn't want to bring the camera overlay in all of these scenes, we can just have it in showing all scenes feature and it will work just the same. Right. We just have to make sure that if you, um, if you're leaving your automated group folder to hide those things, 
right? If I have, if I am in this scene here and I have, again, say if I'm in this scene here, I have my lower third showing in this scene and I'm automating it and I want to, I'm done with my automated group. I just want to come to one of my regular scenes. You have to be mindful to hide those things. Same thing with the timer, right? So if we are using the karaoke as a countdown and we have the timer running up here and we have, let's bring in some music. So let's just do the full thing, right? If we have, we have some music playing here, right? So we have a countdown, countdown scene going on in here. Where is it? Oh, okay. All right. So, so something else that's important to note. Did it wrong. Right. So something that's important to know, right? So we have this, uh, we want to use this as a countdown, a countdown scene. Um, music should, uh, should not be into, you shouldn't bring your music into one of the scenes because just like how we have a comment, if I was to bring finding my physical health and wellness into one of these scenes, again, it's going to get lost in the scene, right? The same thing with your music. So if we're using this for a countdown, we have the three minute countdown showing in all scenes. However, your music, you have to play it manually, right? You play that manually. So these are just like a few of like the extra steps that you're gonna have to do, right? So you're just gonna have to do a little bit of uh, uh, some manual producing on your end, right? You let the automated scenes do its thing. You have the timer in showing all scenes. You're playing the sound manually. And then once your timer ends, what we like to do, because we do we use this for ENN often. Uh, what we like to do is once the timer ends, we'll just hide the timer, fade out the music, like so. I think that's the best way to do it. But just make just just be mindful of that. Um, you cannot play sound effects unless you want to. You cannot play sound effects uh, while the automated scenes are playing because it's just going to go into one of them. Um, I think, I think I deleted it. Let me just make sure. Full, automate your show with eCam Live, right? So if I was to drag this into this scene here, it's not going to play for the entire thing. It's just going to play in this scene because once it goes to full, it's going to stop. And then when it gets back to here, it's going to start playing again. So you don't want that, right? Unless you want to, <laughs> but you don't want it. So just make sure of that. So any sound effect that you're playing, play that manually. And if you have any graphics that you want to show, make sure it's showing in all scenes while the other scenes are rotating. All right. Let's see how you guys are doing. Diego, you're very welcome. I am up to a weekly live stream now. Between your show and docs, I always learn something I could implement. So very helpful. Oh my gosh. So happy to hear that. So happy to hear that. Glad we can help. I'm trying to get out of them mode. All right. All right, let me make sure that I didn't skip any of your comments. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, I just want to have a reminder for you all that at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have... Let me go... Yeah, we have the Ecamm Live Academy launch event with Adrian. That is this morning in a few minutes at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ecamm Live Academy is coming back February 27th to March 10. 
So Adrian is going to be live in a few minutes to kick that off. All right. So we went, we, we covered quite a lot here in terms of how you can use the scenes, your automated uh, group feature. Uh, one more, I have one more use case for this, and that's simply to create uh, camera angles, right? So if we want to create, let me see here. Let's go back into, we go back. All right. So let's say if we created an automatic group folder here, and I'm just going to bring in a blank scene. And the source will be camera. All right. So we have this standard. This is this is my camera, right? Uh, 16 millimeter. Uh, is set to 4K 30, and this is what you're getting. This is the shot that you're getting here, right? And let's say I wanted to automate some some camera shots here, so I can do this one here, and I can duplicate this scene. And now I'm going to go into my camera effects, and this one. I'll just say, for example, camera angle one. So the first scene that we created, we'll just call the camera camera angle one or camera angle A. The second one will be camera angle B. And what we're going to do with camera angle B now, we're going to take camera angle B and do a little crop. Right. So we do something like that. Oops, 10 seconds. Nope. For the sake of this demo, we'll do one and we'll do no transition. How about that? That's actually a little too fast for demo. Let's do, let's do three seconds. Right, so you can do some uh, jump zooms. And probably again, this is for like, if you wanna do a, a pattern interrupt during your presentation, during your, your run of show. So three seconds, again, it's not gonna make sense. Uh, you probably want to do maybe 30 seconds to a minute for this again, right? But for the purpose of this demo, I'm just showing you how you can do that and you can create different angles. Um, so no transition is going to do a nice jump cut just like this. And if we do, let's say, cross dissolve, cross dissolve might work. Yeah, cross dissolve is pretty cool. Right, cross dissolve works. Uh, slow cross dissolve for this might work also. You don't want to go into slower cross dissolve territory. <laughs> you don't want to go into slower cross dissolve territory with this. So, I mean, like for it, just switching cameras like this and creating like different angles, no transition. No transition or probably uh, cross dissolve. <laughs> yeah. So you could do that, right? And you could different create different scenes. And if I had additional cameras, if I had additional, we can do other stuff, right? So if I had a camera back there, then I can cut to this, right? And if, you know, like I had somebody there and mic'd up and whatnot, and I want to cut to their camera, I could automate between these two scenes here, right? And do something back there, right? A wide shot of the couch. You get you could see the pillows and all that stuff. And then a close-up of the person sitting there, right? So we'll have 
we, we, we're basically taking two cameras and we're creating four scenes out of those two cameras, right? Creating two camera angles with this camera and then creating two camera angles with a camera back there. If there was a camera back there, right? So, and you can just automate that and you don't have to worry again about turning your stream deck into a camera switcher or going in here and clicking on your scenes manually. The automated folder will take care of all of that for you. And it is a beautiful feature. So once again, you could use this for camera angles. You can use it for adding some uh, dynamics to your text on screen, like so. You can create, you can use it to create animated overlays, right? So if I want to, for, uh, earlier I showed you that this here, we recorded it and then you bring it back as, you bring it back into Ecamm as a video to play as an um, animated overlay, right? And you have it looping and you can use it for a countdown, like so, right? But if I didn't want to do that, if I didn't want to do that, and I just want to just have this playing as a background, I can do that because I'm going to pause it. Let's pause it under A, right? Just put, let's put these use case into action. And I'm going to create a new camera overlay. And this is Camlink 4K2. And let's, for the heck of it, uh, let's go round. All right? Let's go round. But now we're not gonna show in current scene. We're gonna bring this camera all the way up to show in all scenes and then automate the folder. Right? So you have that. So notice that the camera is staying there regardless of what scene you switch to, the camera will stay in place right there, right? And now you have an automated background. And again, if I am using something like this, if I'm automating the background uh, to create some type of like a nice little fade transition while I'm doing my presentation, I'm not gonna have it run this fast. So for this case, right, this is set to every one second, probably wanna do, let's say we do five seconds and then slow cross resolve will work. Even you could even do a slower cross resolve in this case, right? Because you want to use this as a background and you don't want it to be too distracting. Let's see how that works. Right? So something like that. And again, five seconds will be a little too fast, probably 30 seconds or more, depending on, on, on what you want to do. And just as a reminder, let's say I was using this for a countdown, right? So um, Rukia is saying, play the music manually. I always wonder how to do that going through multiple scenes, right? Again, so we're using this as a countdown. We have our, what's our timer? Our timer is there showing in all scenes, all right? I can move it around. It's not gonna bother me or whatever. It's not gonna get lost, except that it's underneath the camera. So I wanna move it up because it's only at the bottom, right? So now I could drag this. Oh, it's still at the bottom. Let's bring it up one more time. Ah, that's interesting. That never happened before. So hold on a second. Let's, let's pause this for a second. Let's pause this for a second. I'm realizing that it's the countdown is supposed to come up here, but if I go to B, all right, I, I think that I fixed it. While it was automating, uh, the countdown, let's say on if I was on scene A, the countdown was on top, but if I go to scene B, the countdown was going back to underneath the camera, but I stopped it and make sure that I have my countdown at the top my camera underneath and I'm good to go. So I'm going to take this camera, this countdown and bring it right here. The countdown is showing all scenes. My camera is showing in all scenes. 
I turn my camera into a circle because, you know, we're using this nice little circle thing and I'm going to play it. So if I was to go live, this is how we would do it, right? Have everything set this way. Start playing. Start playing. Go live. Hit the go live button. Then bring the countdown. Start the countdown and then start the music. Or you can do it, start the music and then start the countdown, right? And then from there, these steps you have to remember it, right? Because if you're using it for the sake of a countdown, you have to remember once I'm done, I'm ready to start. I'm going to either, well, I would stop the countdown, then stop the music. I did one thing, <laughs> one thing wrong. Let's go back. I don't know if you notice it, right? The camera's still there. So that shouldn't be. So we're going to do that again. Right? Music is playing. We have a uh, countdown showing in all scenes. We have the camera showing in all scenes. We have the music playing manually. So let's do it one more time. We're going to, the countdown goes down to zero. We're going to stop the timer. Stop the music. Stop the camera. And then That's the, that, th those are the only things that you need to remember. Like if you're using it for, um, if you're using those things for a countdown waiting screen and you have a series of overlays and stuff like that, especially if they're showing in all scenes, you have to make sure that you stop them manually because when you go to the next scene, it's going to still be there. All right. I think I did well. I'm right on time. Got like six minutes left until Adrian goes live. Spatia, hello, good to see you here. Um, yes, you're absolutely welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I think I got everybody squared away. So if you don't have any other questions, once again, uh, let me show you that. This is not going to be on the Ecamm Live YouTube channel. It's going to be on um, Adrian Salisbury Training. I believe Mr. Moderator shared this in the chat for you all. It's the Ecamm Live Academy launch event. Uh, Ecamm Live Academy is back February 27th through March 10th. So Adrian is going to be live in a few under Adrian Salisbury Training YouTube channel. So check that out. I love the Ecamm Live Academy. Cannot wait for this to come back. Uh, Anna and I have uh, a session for you all this year in the Ecamm Live Academy uh, Paul is a rock star in there. Valley's in a rock star. They're going to bring so much content for you all, uh, in the Academy. I cannot wait. It's, it's, it's back. It is back. All right. We did good. We did good. We're right on time. So if you do not have any other questions, I hope this was helpful to you. There's so many different, uh, use cases that you can use for the automated scenes. Uh, you know, so let's see what you come up with. And if you do have, I would like to know what you guys are using it for. So please let us know in the comments, in the replay. Uh, thank you again, uh, Paul, for sharing that link. And also the training has been updated for, yes, the training has been updated for 4.0. So if you are still getting used to Ecamm Live version 4.0, Adrian is going to go through all the basics of Ecamm, everything you want to learn, but now with in incorporating the new features that are available in Ecamm Live 4.0. The automated scenes, for example, the automatic group feature is uh, actually a Ecamm Live 3.9 feature, and you can see how amazing it is. So if you're not familiar or used to 4.0 uh, and all the new features that are there, such as multi-streaming, camera, switcher, uh, interactive web widgets, so much more. Ecamm Live Academy is for you. So make sure you check out Adrian in a few minutes. In three minutes, he will be live under Adrian Salisbury Training. So I'll see you guys on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Ecamm Live YouTube channel for Ecamm Network News with 
myself, and Anna Hill. Have a happy Friday, everybody, and see you at the Ecamm Live Academy kickoff.